Hey, I'm Braden and I work on REI's how-to articles and videos. So I've been a runner for a lot of years now, but I found that recently my daily routine of pounding the pavement through my neighborhood has been more important in my life than ever. So I've got a few tips to help you get started running if you're looking to get out there. First, I wanna to touch on some gear needs. One of the best things about running is you don't need much other than a good pair of shoes and some clothes. When it comes to shoes, ideally you should be running in running shoes. We've got a bunch of tips to help you buy your first pair of running shoes and I'll put some links in the description. But if you don't have some running specific shoes or they haven't arrived yet, don't let that stop you from getting out there. A good pair of well-fitting sneakers or even some gym shoes will work fine in the interim. For clothes, anything that fits well and doesn't chafe is great. Ideally, you'll want to look for moisture wicking fabrics, so that would be synthetics and wool. Try to avoid cotton as much as possible because it really holds on to that moisture and leads to all sorts of uncomfortable problems. I tend to run in loose-fitting t-shirts and shorts and of course my favorite hat. But that's just me. Some people prefer tights, especially this time of year when it's a little colder. Before you start your run, it's a good idea to warm up your muscles. And for some tips on that, I'm bringing in a ringer. We're gonna to talk to Yitka, who's an editor at REI and also runs and wins 100 mile races. Hey Yitka, how you doing? Good, how are you doing, Braden? I'm great, thanks. So I've been talking about the importance of warming up before a run. So do you have any tips for that? Yeah. So I like to say that doing a pre-run warm up is a lot like enjoying a cup of coffee to help you ease into your day. I rarely feel amazing right out of the gate when I'm starting a run or when I'm starting my day. So taking a few minutes before my run to do several dynamic stretches and warm up exercises really helps get my muscles ready to go. And then that first mile usually feels a lot more enjoyable. What kind of dynamic stretches do you do? Yeah, there are all sorts of options, but a few of my favorite ones are leg swings, skipping, butt kicks, and arm circles. Okay, cool. So now you're warmed up. So what's your next tip? Yeah, so the next tip I would offer is to start really slow, like even slower than you think that you should. And let go of that idea that going for a run means that you have to run 100% of the time. It's completely fine to take walking breaks or to alternate between walking and running. Try running for two minutes and then walking for two minutes and running for two minutes and walking for two minutes and repeat that until you reach 20 or 30 minutes or whatever your goal time or distance for the day is. And that can be a really great way to build up your aerobic system in a little bit more sustainable way and not make it feel impossible right out of the gate. I totally agree. I still walk during my runs all the time, especially on trail runs. One of the things that I've noticed that has really helped me in my running is consistency. And I know we've talked a little bit about that. Do you, do you have any tips around like training? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially when you're first starting out, the idea of consistency can be a little bit of a double-edged sword. So on one hand, running regularly, say three or four times a week, can definitely help running feel easier sooner than say if you're just going for a run once a week. At the same time, running can be pretty hard on the body. And when your muscles and ligaments aren't used to that kind of mileage, you don't want to overdo it. When I first got into running, I tried to follow an online training plan that had me running four times a week, which seemed really reasonable. But unfortunately, I got really hung up on needing to stick to that training plan at all costs, even if I was feeling a little bit sore or starting to feel an injury coming on. Um, and that can be a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so I'd say aim to get out for a run a few times a week, but keep your plans flexible and make sure you're listening to your body along the way. Awesome. Thank you so much, Itka. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I'll just add that at this point, the one thing you don't want to be paying attention to is your pace. Either pick a route and pay no attention to how long that route takes you, or go out for a certain amount of time and don't pay attention to how far that run was. Again, at this point, it's all about building a consistent habit. So right now, speed and distance don't matter. My last tip is to try to run somewhere you enjoy being. Like most people, I'm really looking forward to getting back to my favorite mountain trails. This is me and my wife running through the Larch last fall. But right now, I'll settle for finding some lovely spring blooms in my neighborhood. Remember that wherever you go, you're way more likely to stick with running if it's a break from the stress of daily life and not something that adds to it. And that's it. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like to see, leave a note in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'm going to go for a run.